Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an N-Scale SD70 Ace locomotive from Broadway Limited. My example is decorated in the Union Pacific Building America scheme. The model comes equipped with a Paragon 3 DCC and sound decoder. The MSRP for this model is $249.99. I got mine for $199.99 from Factory Direct Trains. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The engine comes in a clear plastic box. Inside, the model rests in a foam cradle. A thin wrap of flexible plastic protects small details from getting snagged on the foam. Smaller chunks of foam protect the handrails. There is no manual included, but there is a sheet with various DCC function key assignments. Unfortunately, it's under all the foam in the box, so you have to remove all that to get to it. BLI has a complete manual available for download online. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. I found some photos of the real Union Pacific 8334 online and the model appears to be a close match. UP 8334 was built in 2005. The unit has the as-built antenna configuration on the roof. PTC antenna arrays have been retrofitted to these units in recent years. From what photos I was able to find, 8334 had its original antenna in 2011, but by 2013 had a PTC array. The model would best represent 8334 as it appeared between 2005 and 2011. The paint on the model is opaque, but is thick enough that it slightly softens some of the detail. The markings are crisp and all but the smallest writing is legible with magnification. The UP yellow looks a little dull to my eye. Real UP locomotives do vary in color a bit with age and weathering, so it should look okay running with other UP equipment. The engine has flexible plastic handrails molded in gray plastic that should stand up to moderate handling. There's enough detail under the sills to look good at this size. In front, the model has separately applied uncoupling levers, air hoses, and a plow. The ditch lights are operable. Other small details like grab irons are molded on. At this price, some other N-scale diesels have separately applied grabs, but I think these look okay given the small size of the model. The windshield wipers are cleverly molded on, half on the clear window insert and half on the engine body. Not as nice as separate wipers, but they still look pretty good. The cab has photo etched sunshades. These were sticking straight out on my model as it came out of the box. I bent them down slightly for a better appearance. In back, the engine has uncoupling levers, air hoses, and molded on grab irons. As I mentioned earlier, on top the model has the as-built antenna configuration on the cab. There's a nice horn casting in the center of the long hood. The exhaust hatch and radiator fans are not see-through and lack any real sense of depth. Some weathering would make these areas look better. Underneath the engine has minimal detail. The opening for the speaker is plainly visible on the bottom of the fuel tank. The model has body-mounted Microtrain's compatible knuckle couplers on both ends. The coupler in front is close enough to call it good. The rear coupler is low, so I'm taking five points. All of the wheels on my model are narrow in gauge. This can potentially cause derailment, so I'm taking the maximum 15-point deduction. There is no body wobble. The engine weighs 3.6 ounces. I measured a peak 0.8 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. I'm testing the engine on DCC and I haven't changed any of the decoder settings. The model is set to respond on address 3 by default. F0 turns on the headlights and they are directional, but the behavior is a little different than I've seen in most other decoders. The front and rear lights are both on when the locomotive is standing still. When it starts moving, only the light shining in the direction of travel stays on. F7 turns off the ditch lights. They are on by default. F24 turns on the cab light, though on my model it was on by default. It takes a moment for the light to toggle after the key is pressed. F1 rings the bell. F2 sounds the horn. There are numerous other sounds that can be activated with the various function keys. F8 turns on the sound, but the sound doesn't actually start until the engine starts moving. Personally, I'd prefer it to just be on when I turn it on. The overall volume is very loud for such a small model. I plan on turning mine down. The engine starts too abruptly for my taste and the low speed control range is poor. I suspect that the decoder CV settings could be tweaked to help fix that, but I still think it should be better out of the box, so I'm taking five points. Let's see what we've got. The model had one low coupler, all the wheels were out of gauge, and the default motor control settings could be better, so I took a total of 25 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 75 out of 100 possible points, which would be a C on a report card. 
I'm giving this model a yellow signal. Aside from the wheel gauge issue, this is a pretty nice model. Fixing the wheel gauge can be kind of a chore though, so unless you're comfortable doing that, I don't think I'd recommend it.